here. Um, obviously, tough one on Saturday. A really tough one. Defense played really, really well uh, in a game where we were a little bit out of sorts offensively, but the team battled really hard and gave us an opportunity to win. Uh, and as I say, that made the wrong call. You know, uh, take full ownership and and not taking a knee and giving them the opportunity to have a couple of extra plays and uh, preventing us from seeing the win. So our guys showed up, uh, both coaches and players showed up with a tremendous attitude, which is not surprising, to get right back to work and go get better and all focus on improvement and getting ready for our opportunity this weekend and looking forward to getting after it again tomorrow. So questions, please. Have you gotten any clarity yet? Uh, we have not received any clarity of uh, when his elbow was down and it was called a fumble. We have did not you, received any clarity. Did you request clarity? We have. I think that uh, it does run its course, so um, but we have not received anything on that and some of the other questions that we had that were, uh, you know, we thought we thought were critical factors in the game. So what would change making sure that never happens again? Well, just making the call. Like I mentioned before, I made the wrong call, and I take complete ownership for it. Mario, did you address the team um, with, with what you're saying here? Did you, did you talk to the team about this? Yeah, absolutely. We always talk openly and honestly, and it's, it's no different than I'm saying now. You do it. That's all we, the only way we do things around here is that way. And um, I think our team understands that, appreciates that. I think our team is also a team that takes accountability as a whole and as a team and all the things that we can do better, but it's also just like we ask our players, we also ask our coach to do the same, and that's what I did, and that's what I did, so. Mario, uh, you mentioned on the radio this morning that there's a process of like, deciding to do in those kind of late game situations. What, what is that process, and I guess who is making the decisions, like who are you talking to yeah. in that moment? No, the process was followed in terms of it was time to do so, and again, I should have made the call in the end, and I didn't. Mario, you, um, you, we haven't seen you line up it your team line up the victory formation at all this season. Is it something that you as a coach have not believed in even in close games? No, that's not true. We've done, we have done it before in practice. We work in a four minute. We didn't do it Saturday and we should have. Like I mentioned before, I take complete ownership for it. Next so question, Jack, please. How do you bounce back in facing a tough team on the road again in another prime time game? You do it with honesty, right? And transparency, go and fix all the things that we can do better. Realize the opportunity in front of us. Understand what football is. Very much like life, you know. We uh, we owe it to ourselves and to our players, to our entire organization, like we do our very own families, to look each other right in the eye and demand the best, the absolute truth from each other, so you can always go forward. And that's what we do. Um, and the way that we train our players, the type of DNA and the players that we recruit, we expected a good response today, you know. Um, and that's what we got. And I think you have a very uh, there's a lot of conviction in our preparation and processes, and the guys are very, uh, they're very eager to get back to work and prepare for this weekend's opportunity. It's hard to lose close games no matter the circumstance. And it's unfair to judge this team against other teams because there's been a fragility here. When you lose a close game, it goes back. How much do you tap? You talked all summer, all fall, even some of the spring, about how this team has a better attitude, leadership, how do you tap into that? How, is, how you need that right now? How do you tap sure. into that to get past well, this? Yes, sir. I think, well, I think they've tapped in um, on a couple of occasions this year. I think they, our team tapped in during the, the Texas A&M game when we started off in a hole uh, and just kept climbing out of it. I think Saturday there was a lot of tap in as well. I think, it, I think it's exemplified maybe in um, a play like Tyler's interception now. He runs... 65 yards across the field and forces out of bounds and forces the field goal and gets the chance to win. And in a day where we were out of sorts, maybe in times past, um, maybe the team wouldn't fight back like this one did. So there's, you know, unfortunate, unfortunately, the, uh, the focus is on, hey, the, the tough part, the end result, which, which sucks. It's, it, but, you know, always when you're, as you develop as a team, you got to realize also the the moments of growth and development, and there's a lot of it there. And, and again, that's why it was no surprise at the eagerness uh, and the attitude, just to look in the eye of our players today to come and, and go to work and get after it. So. Mario, 
Um, obviously, the kind of defense breaking down those last couple plays on, uh, on Saturday was surprising itself that they're playing so well all day. How much of that do you think was just kind of being surprised that they were, you know, still playing and not maybe being fully locked in there? Um, I'll tell you what I told them. I told, uh, you know, any player that fumbled the ball, anybody that was on the field at that time, I just told them to take it off of them. I just could have made it easier and kneeled it. So that's it. I don't want to point at players. I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a, but I understand the question. And it's a fair question. It's just that's the way we've gone about it, you know, because again, make sure that, you know, when you have a, a company, an organization, a family, that you're able to take complete ownership when you have to, right? So you could always go forward and get better. Coach, any of the players that were like physically upset on the sidelines, did any of them come to you afterwards or even now today when you met with them and show any kind of more of that leadership role or kind of step up mm -hmm. to what we eventually will now bring to the team? Yeah, yeah we're, we're a, pretty nice, a pretty tight group. And so um, after the game yesterday, today, it is, it's always constant communication. You know, sometimes it's group meetings or leadership council, um, by the way, is one that is is really, um, I would say, just they're empowered, but they're also very convicted in leading the right way and in doing the right things and bringing others with them and lifting other people up. Um, and they, they have a really good understanding of the adversity that comes with football and how you make a decision on whether pushing forward and getting better and just shake it off, wipe all the pity away and go forward. And that is, that's the only choice that we have in this program. And that's something that I think is important for us here at Miami to, to make that the ability to bounce back strong, to make that tradition again. That will always used to be a very strong part of our tradition here. And uh, this is a, a great opportunity to go forward and put foot our best foot and, uh, and play our best football going forward. Crazy as this sounds, um, the season's half over on Saturday, the regular season's half over on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. How would you kind of assess where you are at this point year to year, year over year? And sure. it might be getting out of front of the ministry that nobody aspires for stats after five games, obviously. But, mm -hmm. I mean, do you even look at it in season where you are versus this point last year, or is that something for December? Well, I mean, a little bit of both. I mean, you self-scout every single week. Uh, you look at progress, you know. Are you are you excelling at the things that you really focus on, getting better, things that win games? Are you running the ball better? Are you stopping the run? Uh, have you increased your ability to sustain drives? Is your third down and red zone percentages, are they going up? Uh, and then are you winning more, you know? So there's certainly progress within the program. Um, every single game, it's either been a win or a very competitive game going out of the wire, and that was, Maybe not so much the case a year ago, but uh, this is the kind of progress that we want to have and we want to keep that trajectory, you know, going that way, just continue to um, be ascending in our trajectory so we can continue you know, pursuing the things that we want to be. Did you speak to anyone personally, an old colleague or coach or anyone, about just like how to kind of bounce back and any advice on bouncing back from tough losses like that? You talk about in terms of our staff? Um, well, your staff or anyone outside of your career close to? Right. Well, I think throughout the season, you always refer to some people that are, uh, I would say, mentors to you or whatnot. You draw on your own experiences as well. And uh, you, know, you talk to people whose opinions have value that can relate or are intuitive enough to be able to provide some, some helpful comments, if it's there. And also, even more important is, you know, knowing exactly what's up and talking to your people and being tight and staying tight with your people. I think any time you lose a game, it's it's a uh, you know a pleasure. It's agonizing whenever you lose a game, but that's all right. I mean, this to do this job and to do what we do, you got to be a really really tough person, and that's what you have in this building 24/7. And not just myself, the people talk about the players, talking about the coaches. That is that is a given in terms of the DNA necessary to be a Miami Hurricane at any level. So. That's part of it. It needs to be. If it's not, we got the wrong person in the building, quite honestly. Tyler's performance uh, after watching the film, what did you think of what you saw on, on tape? Well, you know, I know he'd like to have a couple throws back, but you can't take away from the fact he made some monster plays as well to put us in position to win that game. And um, he's, an, he's an unbelievable player and person and leader. 
and anything that he can get better at, he will. But again, it's uh, he will tell you that it's not his best day, but proud of him for his effort, for his resiliency to continue to just keep coming and coming and coming and giving us an opportunity to win the game. Right, what do you see with the red zone opportunities for your offense? Yeah, not very unlike us, right? You know, um, numbers were way down. Um, certainly we, uh, the penalty was a big one, you know, that, that put us back uh, when we scored a touchdown. Um, down in the red zone, you've got to be able to run the ball you know, a little bit more effectively. Um, we had some opportunities. Um, we could have executed some better. We could have called some better. We could have read some better. Uh, just very below our standard for red zone. And it ends up being, the tell, you know, a big part of the, t the teller tape. So. How big of a game has Carolina become for teams and stuff as you well as they to Well, they have... Uh, They've assembled an unbelievable roster. You know, recruiting has really taken uh, has taken shape there because you look at them from top to bottom. They are they are talent laden at all positions. They're big and powerful up front. Uh, it showed them right in the first game of the year. I believe they had nine sacks against South Carolina. Uh, they're explosive out on the perimeter. Um, their backfield is dynamic. Uh, their quarterback is dynamic. They've got a lot of NFL prospects on there, and they play well. They play hard. They play with toughness. Uh, they're physical. Just a, an excellent football team. You know, they're uh, they're about as talented as a roster as you'll see. Uh, UNC's receiver Kev Walker. I don't see the spring situation. He went through, but he's back now. Right. How do you prepare for a player with his ability, and how do you prepare when it's only really one week of, of game tape available for him? To the best of your ability, you know you. I mean, anytime there's a transfer coming into a team, if you don't have film on them, you see what they did well, and maybe um, you, you try to configure, well, how's that fit into the system, or will they add this particular schematic tweak to the system, being that the player is really good at it. So you got to do a little bit of both, but you also keep in mind they have a lot of weapons, and they've used them really well. I mean, they've, they've practically scored at will, you know, and their defense puts a lot of pressure on people for, you know, for them to try to keep up, which really adds to the ability of that defensive line to create negative plays, sacks and tackles for losses. So they play excellent complementary football, you know, so the use of a of an added piece like that is certainly something that we're keeping an eye on. And then kind of in the same vein, um, you guys faced Drake May here last year, um, probably one of the better jobs than anyone did against him last year. What did you learn about his ability and what he brings to the field when he played last year? Well, he does it all, and the thing is, uh, his understanding of the offense uh, coupled with his ability is what makes it really, really hard to stop because we all know about the dynamic arm. We all know about his ability to, to take off with the football as well. But he just, he understands the game really well. The game's really slow for him. Does that make sense? Um, the moment the ball is snapped, you can tell he knows what he's going to do. And uh, because of that, he can, he can head fake you. You know, he can, he can do some things that will make you think this and him do that. So he exposed a lot of defenses with just his knowledge of the game and his ability to play into this game. Remember when your first press conference when you got hired, yeah, yeah, you talked about one of the things you talked about was the ball down and the loss. And I assume you mentioned that to the team probably once or twice in the last 22 months. How, how, how valuable has that lesson been and how difficult do you think it's been for everyone in this building? Yeah. It's, it's an everlasting lesson, really. Uh, if you're in athletics, Right, athletics teams have gotten. I remember playing here, and you know, the only noise was really the Herald, right? You know, outside of that, there was no other. You know, coverage-wise, you know, there were some other entities, but now I think you know we all know our athletes, uh, our programs are subjected to a lot of noise, and it's just as important during tough times, in good times too. You really got to do a good job, just putting that away because it just. When you feed off of that, man, it's, it's hard to really comprehend and understand where your feet are and the reality of what you have to do week in and week out. And I think our guys have done a pretty good job about that, with that, um, of that. Um, it's just they're here for four hours a day. The other 20 or so hours, they're away. But I'm confident in our leadership. I'm um, confident in their intent and their conviction to be really, really good. And that's going to be part of it. And at the same time, we've got to be able to deal with whatever surfaces with it. Have you seen Drake add stuff to his game since you has been in? Yeah, yeah, he's he's incredible. I mean, every throw, you name it, uh, the deep ball, the back shoulder, the pose, the seam, 
the quick game, the RPO, uh, the quarterback runs, the improvised quarterback runs, extending plays. He does it all. Um, he makes, he's made a lot of people miss two one-on-one -on -one open field tackles, made people miss, put a foot in the ground, and scored it out for an extra 15, 20 yards. So uh, he presents a, a tremendous challenge. You gotta be really disciplined in what you do, um, and certainly just gotta play in, in great football position all the time. You can't ever compromise rush integrity lanes, because if you do, he'll make you pay. You know, he really, his pocket presence is that of someone who's, who's been around, seems like someone's been around for a long, long, long time. So uh, credit to him. He's uh, he's coached really well. He's a hell of a talent. Mario, your, your relationship with Matt Brown, how well you know him, and I also want to ask about Keenan Memorial Stadium. Mm -hmm. Your experiences there. I, I don't know Coach Brown extremely well. Um, obviously, he's a guy that's been around for a long time. Super uh, well respected in the profession. Uh, got a chance to meet up at ACC meetings, and he's a very well respected uh, person, not only nationally but within the conference as a voice for college football. Um, in terms of you know playing over there, I've been an assistant coach while playing over there, and understand how it's a great college atmosphere, right? It gets it gets loud, it gets ruckus, and uh, a great opportunity. Um, you know, it's why you play in the, at the University of Miami to be able to play in games like this and create uh, you know the buzz for an atmosphere like the one we're gonna walk into on Saturday. Recruiting momentum seems to still be building. Mm -hmm. It's just what does that say about big picture, about belief in the trajectory? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, what's obvious is uh, the constant ascension of the program. You know, things are getting better across the board. We did not get the result we wanted to on Saturday. That's as obvious as the day is long. But so is our progress. You know, and I think people see that. People have been waiting for that. Now that they see it, it's, uh, it's piling on. It's building upon itself. You know, and it, uh, what it allows you to do is probably the most important thing in, in recruiting is besides um, well, let me put it this way. It's not just finding the talented players, right? It's making sure that it's really, really talented players that are really, really good people and really hard workers that want to compete and that want to be at the University of Miami for the right reasons, you know? For as much as what they could do at Miami, for Miami, um, tied into what Miami could do for them and their futures. And that's starting to come together. Um, and they also recognize that last year's class and what seems to be building for this year's classes is a really, really special group of guys, you know, the right kind of people. So the momentum is going strong and we intend to build on that momentum even more. Anything else for Coach? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Thank Have you. a good day.